Ten years ago, the Commonwealth Eminent Persons Group issued a bold and forward-looking report that called for a radical rethink of the Commonwealth. The report warned of, quote, a growing perception that the Commonwealth has become indifferent because it fails to stand up for the values that it has declared as fundamental to its existence. But member states did take forward the proposal for a Commonwealth Charter. That charter affirms in clear language the place of the people in the Commonwealth. It affirms that human rights and democracy are central to the Commonwealth identity. And almost 10 years after the adoption of the Charter, it is time for us to pause and take stock. In this three-part series of critical conversations, we are bringing together leaders, thinkers, activists, and experts from across the Commonwealth to discuss what we have achieved and what remains to be done. The Commonwealth is a bit of a sleepy hollow and we've got to stir it up a bit. Stir things up because that's how you make progress. It can be an organization that is, that is very much in, in the high ups and, and not so much on the grassroots level. For the institution to have that relationship with the individuals, it needs to stop being an institution that comes is always ends up in boardrooms, in conference room, and looking at how to connect with the people. When we have a, a conversation about the Commonwealth, it is still at a higher level. And that doesn't really mean much to the person on the ground who is having their rights violated. I think the Commonwealth leaders have to decide whether this is an institution of the past or an institution of the future. What the Commonwealth has to be is people-led. A meaningful change in the Commonwealth is that it needs to start to become a binding institution. We need more people-driven action. One of the things that I've noticed as an advocate is that governments, uh, government officials can go off to international spaces and make these promises and the people at home never hear about it. We've heard a lot of mouthings. Um but really no joint coordinated activity from the Commonwealth. And if you look at where Commonwealth countries are in relation to COP26, you'll find them all over the place. Uh, there is no coordinated approach. From a Caribbean perspective, what we are seeing in the Commonwealth is an ethical crisis, an ethical crisis around equality, an ethical crisis around shared values that really are being threatened every day. Right now, I feel like it is uh, the opportune moment uh, for uh, the Commonwealth to reposition itself as that uh, vehicle that helps to advocate uh, further for uh, its member states who are largely low-income and middle-income countries. In order to strengthen engagement between civil society and co the uh, Commonwealth, uh, that there should be meetings between foreign ministers and representatives of Commonwealth civil society. We really need to come up with practical solutions that address what the Charter says, the needs of the people within the whole Commonwealth and, be, and have an organization that is capable of addressing the, the, the challenges of the future.